start by uh, saying thank you to, to Mike Willis. I probably don't say it enough, but I will come in here 15, uh, 10 minutes till and say, Mike, I got a PowerPoint. He makes it happen. And uh, so I do appreciate, I appreciate him uh, getting our PowerPoint set up for us this morning. I'd actually already thought, okay, I'm going to have to try to dim the lights. When you know it, there comes Mike. Before I can get uh, even get up here, he comes and dims the lights for me. And so, uh, so we're good to go. While I'm bragging on him, though, I do want to say we started our uh, Skyline softball teams. We have two teams this year. And uh, your elder, one of your elders, Mike Willis, was on fire the other night. And, uh, I mean, he was just hitting them left and right. I, I know we got a triple one time, so I uh, just thought I might brag on him for a little bit there. But I do appreciate uh, both of our elders and, and all of our uh, members of the congregation here who put so much time and, and effort to, to make things go right. So glad that you're here this morning. Uh, if you'd like, turn, turn with me in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. I want to start by reading a couple of verses this morning. Uh, it's about 10 verses or so. And uh, I didn't want to be mean to Becker and make him read uh, 10 verses uh, for the scripture read this morning. So Proverbs chapter 15. Let's begin in verse uh, 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger lays contention. The way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment, but a man of understanding walks uprightly. Without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude counselors, uh, multitude of counselors, they are established. I want to ask you the question uh, this morning. How happy is your family? You know, if I asked you, and don't raise your hands, but if I asked everybody in here right now to raise your hand, if you think you have a happy home life, you think your, your family is, is just a happy, happy home, I, I'm going to say that pretty much everybody, everyone in here would raise your hand and say, yes, we're, we're happy at home, right? We have a happy home. Maybe not everyone, but you see a lot of times what we like to what we like to do, we like to put on. We like to put on a face sometimes. You know, we we like to act like everything's good, right? And 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 we like to hide and, and act like everything is great, everything's going well. What but really, really there's some problems. There's some problems going on at home, maybe with our spouse. Maybe there's there's some problems going on. Uh, at home with our kids. There, there's just all kind of tension, there's stress just mingled in with our, our, our family at home, but we, but we try to hide it because we don't want to act like it's there. Why is it that there's so much stress and tension in homes today? You know, we go back to the Proverbs here and, and, and we notice a bunch of the problems and tensions that we just read about. Verse 13 talks about sorrow Verse 15 talked about affliction. Verse 16, trouble. Verse 17, hatred. 18, strife. And verse 22, disappointment. And all of these things come together and sometimes many of these things we allow them to come in and we just allow them to take over our home life. We, we don't have love anymore. We don't have the, the happy times that we long for. I, I think we can all say we, we want to have a happy home. We want to, to, to just have a joyful time with our loved ones, with our, our, our close family members. Yeah, this really isn't anything new. If you go, go back and you think back all the way to the, the first man and woman, when Eve deceived Adam, and, and think about the problems that were caused there. And then you think about as they began to have ch children, something wouldn't go 
going right, think about Cain and Abel and the conflict that was there. Cain killing Abel. And we have several different conflicts. Jacob and Esau. You have Joseph and his brothers and all this strife and this hatred that goes on. And it goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Eli, Eli, Samuel, they both dealt with rebellious and, and wayward children. And, and if you remember reading of, of David, think about the problems that David and his household had. Hosea had, had marital problems. And, and so this really isn't nothing new. But what, what's the deal? What is the deal? How can we fix this? So many families, uh, family problems in our world today. You know, I think back as I was writing this sermon, I, I thought back to uh, being a school teacher last year and teaching these middle school kids. And I know we have uh, a lot of school teachers here today or, or people who, who work with kids. And, man, you can just see. And it's just so sad because... There may be a couple of kids there who, who actually are growing up in a good home. But the majority of these kids just have a terrible, terrible home life that they're growing up in. And you can see it. I, you know, I can see it in the way that they would act, the way that they would talk, the way that they would treat other people. I, I can't, can't tell you how many times when I was coaching a football game or uh, archery meet or something and... The games would be over, everybody gone except for a handful of kids almost every time. Same kids who, honestly, some, some of them didn't know where they were going to, they didn't know whose house they were staying at that night. Wherever their mom may decide to stay that night. Or, and, and, and so we have conflicts all throughout the world. We have these, these problems. And it's sad to say, but, but even in the church, we have this tension a lot of times when we leave Skyline Church of Christ Church building and go home maybe sometimes we even get in the vehicle on the ride home there's a lot of tension and stress it's just not happy sometimes and so we want to look at this morning some ways that we can might get rid of that some ways that we can get to having a happy home Turn with me to Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. You know, the Bible's very clear. The Bible's clear what, what he wants families to be like. It's very clear. Matthew 19, 6 says, Wherefore, they are no more twain, but they are one flesh. And guess what? What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put us under. God wants family members to, to be united. It should not be separated. We, we should be one. And how do we get to that point when we're arguing, when we're fighting, when we're yelling, when we're uh, causing problems so, so, so often? How do we do that? How do we get to this point? You know, uh, we're, we're supposed to take care of our own. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. We've got to take care. Take care of our, our own. But so many times we don't. Ephesians chapter 5. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to begin reading in verse 22. It says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the house as also Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord do, uh, does the church. For we are members of his body. So this whole passage here, we're going to keep going. It, it, it talks about what, what a happy home life should be like. If, if you want a happy home, get these things right. 
love one another. For this reason, verse 31, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So why do we have problems? Are we following this? Going down Ephesians 6 there. What about your kids? Pay attention here. Children, I bet you can quote it. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in training and admin, admonition of the Lord. So why is it? Why is it that our homes just aren't happy? Why is it we have so much stress and so much tension and so many problems? And how can how can we how can we get to this? How can we have a happy home? That's what we want to look at uh, this morning. Point number one. And I know this may seem like oh really. Happy homes have happy people. Learn to laugh a little bit. Sometimes one of the one of the things you'll notice when just so much tension and problems, you're not laughing, you're not having fun with the people you're supposed to love the most. In fact, that's what happens if we're not careful. These people who who we're supposed to love the most, they're they're our spouse, our children. And and we just flip a switch once we leave everybody else and, and there comes all this this tension, this uh, this hatred almost. Learn to laugh and have fun. Proverbs chapter 15. As we were reading a, a moment ago, Proverbs 15 verse 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. If you want to be happy, have a merry heart. Smile. Have fun. Laugh a little bit. Don't be so tense and, and, and pruned up all the time. Have fun with each other. You know, we're, we're children of God. We are Christians. We can say, I'm going to have a home in heaven when this life is over. People, we have every, every reason in the world to be happy. Because we have God on our side. Psalms chapter 1, 126, excuse me. Psalms chapter... Uh, 126. Psalms 126 verses 2 and 3 says, Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Their mouths, they were filled with laughter and, and full of joy because they could see what God has done for them. Verse 3, The Lord has done great things for us. Guess what? We are glad. What's the problem? And we go home and we're just mad for some reason. Maybe things ain't going the way we want them to. Well, people, we have, we have a reason to be happy because Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and we have a hope for a home in heaven one day. You've got a reason to be happy. Laugh a little bit and have fun together. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And guess what verse 4 says? There's a time to weep, but there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. There's a time to have fun. And if you're not having fun with your children, you're not making... And so that, that's what happens. We get so busy sometimes. You know, my kids go do this and that, and I've got to work all day, and we just come home, and they go to their rooms and go and, and watch TV. We don't even spend any time together. That's a problem. That's a problem. These are our children. These are our, our husbands, our wives. Spend time with your family. Laugh and, and smile and, and have a good time together. Proverbs 17, verse 22, as Becca read for us, a joyful 
heart is good medicine. You want to fix something? Try to be happy. Try to bring joy in. Try to think on the positive things of life. Try to, try to think of, of the future, of, of heaven, having a home in heaven. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A lot of things can be, a lot of things can be fixed if we'll just take, take a little time to smile. And, and, and take a little time to, to laugh together and have fun together. That's point number one. Happy homes have happy people. So let's laugh a little bit. Make time. Make time for your, your loved ones, okay? Make time to, to get together and, and just talk a little bit and, and cut up and, and have a good time. Number two, happy homes are content. So one of the problems we have, one of the problems we're not happy and, and is because we haven't reached this sense of, of contentment in our home. You know, the world tells you today, man, you've got to have, 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 right? You, you, need to, you need to get the nicest house. You need to have the, the nicest car, the nicest truck, all right? You need to have all of these things. I want you to know, I talked to a man the other day. He had got this new bass boat. Look at some of these guys bass fish a lot, I know. But they had bought this new bass boat, brand new, okay? $72,000 for a boat. $72,000. And so, so what do we have, right? We have people that know you're going to pay for these things. And, and so we won't, won't, won't. And so we go out and work all the time. And, and we, we throw to the side everything that matters. We, we lose what our focus should be on. We change our priorities so that we can get these things, right? And that's what happens. And that, that's not a happy home when our priorities are based on getting this stuff. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21 says this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Why? Because moth and rust is going to destroy it. Thieves, you're going to break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And there's the statement that brings it all together. You want a happy home? Where's your heart? Where's your mind? Where's your focus? Because if everybody's in this family, in this home, if your focus is not set on getting to heaven with that one that you, you love and you live with, we might have a problem. And that could be the cause of it. Proverbs 15, 16 to 17, as we read, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Better is dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf. Be content. Learn to be content. Learn to enjoy what you have, what God has blessed you with. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and guess what? We cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. They fall into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is uh, through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many things. You might wonder, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? Why, why are my children not happy? Why, why is my spouse not happy? Why am I not happy in my home? Maybe your priorities are a little messed up. Make sure you're careful where you set your heart and mind. Be content. Happy homes are content. Number three, happy homes control anger. You know, 
I bet there's a lot of fights and a lot of rough times that go on at home to be fixed if we knew how to control our anger. If we took time to, to control anger. You know, uh, anger, not all anger is bad. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry and do not sin. You can be angry and not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Give no opportunity to the devil. Proverbs chapter 15 there in verse 18 says this, A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger lays attention. Be slow to anger. Learn how to control the anger within your home. Control your anger by controlling your tongue. We've got to be careful. And I, I'm talking to myself here too. You can ask Paige. I'm sure she'll tell you. Sometimes I... I'm sorry. Sometimes, and I, I'm, I'm confessing it now, I, I understand. I may let my tongue speak before I think. And it just makes things worse and worse. It just digs the hole deeper causes more tension because it, it keeps on stirring up that anger that is within either me or, or my wife or your kids and it's because I'm not controlling it. Colossians 3.13 says bearing with one another and if one has a complaint against another guess what we should do? Forgive each other. That's, that's a problem we have. I'm, we for some reason love holding grudges. Boy, it's just hard. You know, some, somebody, boy, you know, maybe your parents, maybe kids, maybe your parents have has done something and made you mad. You just want to be mad at them for a while. Or maybe husbands, your your wife has done something against you. And and so you're you're mad. You're angry. And you just hold that anger in and you just keep on holding it in. Forgive one another as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. A lot of problems would be done away with if we could learn to forgive quickly, right? Forgive one another. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. But if we're helping each other and we're striving to, to be better together, if I mess up, forgive me. Forgive me and help me help me get better. Happy homes control anger. Number four, happy homes use wisdom. There in Proverbs 15, again, 21 and 22 there, where it says, verse 21, Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment, but a man of understanding walks uprightly. Wisdom is using what you know, using the knowledge that, that you have uh, gained okay, from God's Word and using that, putting it to use, using it in the right way. Be wise in, 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 in the decisions that you make as a family and, and understand that that means you've got to make these decisions together. I think that's another problem we have a lot of times. We, we, we don't like to talk about stuff. Communication's messed up, right? Right? And so we don't use wisdom a lot of times when we make decisions. And I, 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 sometimes I forget, right? But work on, work on communicating it and, and making decisions together, coming together to, to, to uh, a, a unity, right, within the home. Talk things out with one another. Number five, happy homes are kind. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Put these things on. Help each other out. Do some, do some simple acts of kindness. Ephesians chapter 4 says this. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 and 32, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. But instead, guess what? Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. You know, guys, help out a little bit around the house. Do the dishes every now and then. Do a, a load of clothes in the laundry. Just simple acts of kindness can go such a long way. And I, I can guarantee you that your wives are not going to get mad at you if you do the dishes or if you do a load of clothes, unless you obviously do it the wrong way. Then they might. Because their 
wives out a little bit. Right. Same with the ladies. Help your help your husbands out. Maybe if it's yard work. Maybe it's the their their job or or whatever it might be. Help them out in some way. You you know how you know everything that your husband's going through. You know how you can help them. Do do a simple act of kindness. Kids. Kids, help out at home. Help your parents out. I promise you, it, it, it will relieve and some of that tension that, that just kind of hangs on there. Help out. And then our last point that I want to look at. So, And, and I will say that this next point is, is the most important one. So if I need to scream really loud to wake everybody up right now, I can. But... I may need to do that. Last point I want us to look at. Happy homes have God in them. Does your home have God in it? Absolutely. Right? You know, I mean, we're, church, we're here now, right? God's in our home, is he not? Do you take God to your house with your family? How many times, think about it, this past week, I want you to answer to yourself truthfully. How many times this past week did you stop with your family? You want a happy home? How many times this past week did you stop with your family and pray to God together? How many times this past week did you stop and you, you took time to sit down with your family and study God's Word. You want to know the root of, of family problems? They don't have God in them a lot of times. And what I mean by that is, you know, God, I want you to help. Why do we not? What is going on? Why, why is there so much tension? Why is there so many problems going on in our home, and, and we wonder, God, what's going wrong? But we don't even have God in our home. We don't bring Him home with us. We don't let, allow Him to be a part of our home because we don't spend time together praying to Him. We don't spend time together studying His Word, and we should be ashamed. We should be ashamed. We wonder why we don't have a happy home. And it's because so many times we don't put forth the effort to study with our kids, with our spouse, by our, yet alone by ourselves. What's going on? I don't understand. Why, why am I having trouble? Why, why is my kid not doing something they're supposed to do? Why are they getting into this trouble? Why is my spouse always mad at me? Why, why can we never get along? have God in your home with you? You know, every problem, every problem that our family has, every problem that we may have in the world can be solved right here. It can be solved right here. Yet, we go home, we put this thing on the shelf, and we don't pick it up again until maybe Wednesday night or next Sunday. Our problems can be solved, people. Right here. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. A very very f familiar passage there where uh, Joshua is talking and he says, and, and, he, and he says to the people there, if, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you're going to serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or, rather, or, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But guess what Joshua said? He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Are you, are you serving the Lord in your household? Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer can help out in so many ways. Prayer can take away and help stop.
stop these, these problems that we have going on? Do you have prayer in your homes? Do you pray to God? Psalms 119.105, another familiar passage, says your word is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light unto my path, right? We're just wandering around in the dark in our house, in our homes. We're just wandering around in the dark if we're not using God's word to guide us. How do we expect to get anywhere if we're not using the light, right? So just some things to think about this morning. Things that we might want to implement within our home life. Do you want to have a happy home? How happy? How happy is your home truly? If your home has a lot of tension and stress, it's time to it's time to get rid of that. It's time to have a happy home. I appreciate your uh, attention this morning and we have the time now to um, offer the Lord's invitation if there are any here this morning who have not yet put on Christ in baptism and you have the desire to do that we want to encourage you to, to not wait any longer if, if you have the desire to, to study God's word further and you need somebody to study with we would be happy to do that with you maybe you're already a Christian this morning and uh, you know maybe there's things in your life that uh, just not you know you're not doing right there's sin in your life and, and, and you have been separated from God. And you understand that, that that's not a good state to be in. And we want to encourage you to get back on that right track this morning. If you're subject in any way this morning, if you will, come and let us know as we stand.